morning everyone and thank you for joining us today for the UPGS virtual showroom tour. Um, we've got the pleasure of being joined by Simon Showman, the, the CEO of UPGS and their commercial director, um, Jenny Stewart. Um, I'm going to hand over to Simon who will give you a look around their showroom. Simon. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning everybody for giving us your time this morning. Um, and welcome to the Ultimate Product Showroom. This is one of our showrooms. This is in our Oldham headquarters. We also have a very similar showroom to this in Cologne. And we also have another showroom in Guangzhou in China. That looks, they all look very, very, very similar. Today is going to be a brand and product presentation. We're going to walk you through some of our brands. I'm going to walk you through some of any a snapshot of our innovation that we've done over the last nine months, and it's quite exciting. We've worked very, very hard um, over the last eight, nine months throughout the pandemic. It's been a really tough time for everybody, especially, especially the retailers that have had to close. We've been very, very focused as a business on the buying and selling aspects of our business. So on the selling side, we focused very strongly with the customers that were open because they needed our help. They needed help filling the shelves because obviously they were selling out and we had to restock them. But we were also there for our customers that were closed, that couldn't open the shops and had difficulty paying. We were taking stock back off them and moving stock around for them. So our buying team, we focused them very simply when the pandemic started. We said, look guys, everyone's gonna carry on working. We've got our Guangzhou office with all our sourcing team there. After the pandemic, what we wanna do is we wanna come out of this with all new ranges. We want the retailers that have been sat at home struggling to find new product. We want to be that solution for them. So the next few months, we focus very hardly on innovation, new products, new packaging. You had a, you had a, a lot of retailers struggling because they were at home. For example, the supermarkets, that none of those buyers have even been back to the office yet. They needed us to perform and we have performed for them. And it's, uh, it's definitely been our success. It's been, uh, Extremely hard times, but the, the learning curve has been immense and it's been really, really interesting. Our ethos is simple. It's John Lewis product for the Asda price. We want to put beautiful products in the home of every consumer. We want to make it affordable and that's our job. So what we're going to show you today is how we've been selling to the retailer. The retailer has been at home. They've really been struggling to get the job done. But we, we came up with a solution and we came up with this solution on day one. No retailer could come in a showroom, so we'll bring the showroom to you. So we've been having meetings every day, some in Poland from this office, some in Manchester, some people in London, some people in Paris, some people in Germany. We brought the, we brought the ultimate product showroom to their living room and they've been buying off us and they've been buying a lot of us. And our competition, they still, still aren't doing it. So today, we're going to show you our new brands, like I said, our innovation. Jenny Stewart, our commercial director, who's been with the company 16 years. Um, she started off as a buying assistant 16 years ago, built herself up through the buying team, then went to live in Hong Kong for us, run the Hong Kong office out there, came back, took over sales, and now is commercial director of the business. She's going to show you what we've been up to over the last nine months. And then after that, we'll sit down and we'll do a 15, 20 minute questions and answers. So enjoy the experience. Jenny, over to you. Thanks, Simon. I'm just going to give you a little taster into what we've been doing during the pandemic with our retailers globally. So at any one time, we have over 3,000 products live, all under our heritage brands. These are British heritage brands that have stood the test of time. I'm going to take you to our first brand here, which is Clean Easy. Clean Easy is our newest brand to our portfolio. It's very exciting to us. It originates as a door-to-door -door catalog company, so it used to post catalogs of household, selling household goods um, through the door nationwide. And we've taken it right back to its roots. So we're keeping to those essential home goods, those gadget items that will help you clean and organize your home, all at value price points. We've done a soft launch with this brand over the course of the last year or so, and we've had huge successes. 
So uh, currently it's listed in all mail order outlets. So you've got it on Amazon, you've got it on JD Williams, you have it on Berry, which is Shop Direct, and you have it in Studio, which is Express Gifts. And it's really taken us by surprise, the quick traction that we've gained with this brand. So to just give you an example, everything retails from $1.99 up to approximately around $29.99 for a premium product. But you've got items like this. So it's the Magic Eraser Sponge, the market leader is a two pack for $1.99, worth 10 sponges for $1.99. You've got your essential cleaning sets and you've also got your complete home set. So even in this, you have a mop, you have your dusters. To buy all these pieces individually would cost you around 20 pounds, but we give it to you as a full home starter set for $12.99. So it's all about giving that added value on your heritage brand. The brand is actually 100 years old next year, so we're really excited by this. So we're penetrating the market with lots of activity, marketing campaigns and promotion campaigns going into next year. So it's something to watch out for. Next is Beldre. So Beldre is our largest brand. It's a brand that we own and it certainly has stood the test of time. It's 150 years old next year. It's the originator of the collapsible ironing board. So, uh, which everybody recognises. And we have this brand across multiple categories. So it's across heating and cooling, it's across laundry and utility, and it's across floor care. This brand is well recognised. We've entered the European market so surprisingly well with this brand. It's been well received. We're in all the supermarkets in the UK. I'm sure you're all familiar with this brand. And now we're also entering the likes of Kaufland. We've got Lidl in Europe. We've got Raver, all those credible um, customer portfolios that you'd expect to have. Two interesting products I'm gonna show you within the heating and cooling area. We've got the Arctic Dome. Everybody is now working from home. It's important that we have a comfortable environment to be working in. Climate Dome will, array, will actually reduce the temperature of your home very quickly. So what we have here, and it's painted by the way, it's pendant, painted pendant pin, so it's unique to us. You have two water wells here. You fill them and you put them in your freezer. You then insert them into this little unit here, and it will instantly, as soon as the air flows through the Arctic Dome, it reduces the temperature of the air into making it a comfortable, more environment, inviting environment to work in. And then you've also got this nice mood lighting here. Another nifty, unique feature we've got here is this little pad. So quite cleverly, you can add aromatherapy oils to it. You insert it into the back and it will diffuse your whole room, making your room smell lovely and nice as well. You get all this for £30, so it's at that cheap price point, £30, and this is actually successfully in the market now. We are currently established within most DIY outlets with our heating and cooling. So you'll see us in B&Q, you'll see us in home base, you'll see us in the range, and you'll see us in the B&M, everywhere that you would expect to see your essential DIY heating and cooling items. I'm going to move on to this item here, which is the more premium product. So this is our climate dome. So more upgrade to our little Arctic dome there. This item is a four in one, so it's all season. So you've got your cooling elements, you've got your heater, you've got your dehumidifier, and you'll also have the aromatherapy, which is becoming increasingly popular. It's all remote, so you can, you can um, monitor your temperatures here remotely, and it's also oscillation, all for 50 pounds. So again, it's given a lot of product for the retail price point. So these are two new most exciting products, which again has entered the market and is actually growing into next year. I want to take you this way now. So we're going to keep with Beldre and we're going to go over to Home Utility. So as I mentioned earlier, Beldre was the originator of the, of the collapsible ironing board. So we have a collection of collapsible ironing boards, as you would imagine. And we go across ranges such as um, laundry baskets, pegs, errors, mops, rooms, anything that you would expect to see in your home as an essential piece to keep your home nice and tidy and clean. I'm going to show you two ranges today, two new very exciting ranges that we've just recently launched in the market and will be expanding out our distribution into next year. 
And within Beldre, we have got our newest addition, which is Pet Plus. So the pet industry is booming. And um, if you've been at home, you've actually probably spent more time with your pet, or if you've been lonely, the likelihood is you've bought a pet recently during the pandemic. So what we've put together here is a collection of solutions to help you keep away those dirty, mucky paw prints and also those hairs off your upholstery. So for example, we have an upholstery brush. So what we've cleverly done is applied a rubber bristle to it, so which grips all of the hair and takes it off your fabric or your sofas really easily. Something like this retails for no more than $2.99. And you've also got your one night which is your lid rollers, which we really cutely put a little mold of a paw print, just keep it nice and cute. They retail for $1.99. And then we have the more essential pieces like your mops and your brooms to really clean those floors. We've had quite a lot of influencers take us up on this because again, it's something unique and different. And within our Amazon marketplace, we've seen our sales triple over the course of the last couple of weeks just by having that extra activity and social media platform. So this is a range that we're really excited by. We launched it in the range and they just widened the distribution. It's been a huge, huge success. So this is something that you'll see in the stores near you very soon. The next one is anti-back. This is more relevant now than ever. Everybody's cleaning their homes. Everybody's trying to keep their homes safe and trying to keep them bacteria and virus free. What we've done here is we have actually applied a chemical, an antibacterial chemical, to all our mop heads, our broom bristles and our cloths. Um, and it's obviously our anti-back range, which is more relevant. So what it does is it prevents the growth of bacteria. So what you do is you don't get those nasty smells or odors, and you also get longevity out of your product as well. We've had a massive success with this range. So we've actually launched this in Kaufland, um, and we've also got it in B&M, and we also have it in Tesco's going live now. And the sale reads have been really successful on this. So we're already gaining penetration. Again, it's something new. Everybody's cleaning, it's a massive trend. It, there's a demand there, but again, the buyer demands to see newness. And this is unique to us. So anti-back, it's all at the same price points as you would expect without the technology. So it's, it's a smart piece of kit there. You've got a coordinating range, as you can see here, so from your essentials, you've got mops, you've got your brooms, and you've got your cloths. So all your essential pieces under our anti-back collection. I'm now going to move you over to Beldre Floor Care. So Beldre Floor Care is a range that's taken us by storm. It's enabled us to really easily penetrate the European market much quicker than we ever anticipated, actually. In terms of what we've actually achieved here is the market leader, a third of the price of the market leader. So I'm gonna give you some examples of some product now. And um, we successfully in the UK are the UK, the fifth, UK largest brand, just below the market leaders as well. And we've done that quite quickly over the course of the last couple of years. You will see this brand out there. It's very much dominated in the retail market. So you'll see it in Asda, you'll see it in Tesco's. We've successfully put it in Kaufland, which have over 3,000 stores. We've put it in NKD, which have 1,800 stores. So our distribution of this range in particular in this brand has been quite increasingly significant. I'm going to show you the Beldre Agility. So we launched this two years ago. We launched an ideal shopping actually because it's something that you can easily demonstrate. It's got lots to talk about. The market leader, as I'm sure a lot of you will have, um, retails at 299. Really frustratingly, you can only do your stairs with it before the batteries run out. So you get 10 minutes operating time maximum, rather annoying. We actually improved the quality of our agility. So we actually get 50 minutes operating time with this particular item. So you actually can do a full clean without the battery running out. Um, it's a great line, it's 79.99. It's 99 pounds down to 79.99. You will see this range, you'll see it in Tesco's, you will see it in Asda, you will see it in the range, you'll see it in Robert Dias, and it's growing from strength to strength. So we're only on our second year, we're developing it out, and it's taking market share aggressively from the market leaders. Again, it's just giving that value for money proposition. I'm gonna show you an example of um, our packaging here as well, because it's a great execution of our packaging. We design and create our packaging in-house. So we take full control of our packaging. You have a three second rule. The three second rule is you have three seconds to engage with the consumer and encourage them to buy. 
So we make sure that all the key features and benefits are clearly identified on the front of the packaging. The product has to be easily understood. On top of that, you can see here, we've got the Good Housekeeping Institute, which is a great accreditation to have. Again, it just reinforces that good quality product at a good value price point. We're actually applying this good housekeeping to a lot more products now, as we've seen, it's given us quite an increase in uplifting sales. So it's something that customers are resonating with. Keeping with that, another good housekeeping SKU that we've actually just launched into the market is our Revo. So our Revo, again, was something really easy that we actually launched. We didn't anticipate it to take off so quickly, actually. And again, it's been really familiar with the European market as well as the UK. The market leader is currently 149 down to 129. We're 49.99 down to 39.99 for almost the identical product and you cannot fault the performance of this. So what you have is you have a charging docking station that you leave on your kitchen countertop. So it's continuously charging. And then you have this nifty little vacuum, really high powered performance. Now you've got your children at home with the crumbs and all the mess in your kitchen and you just want a quick clean up before you guess why. You just turn it on, clean up all your, all your crumbs, place it back into the docking station and away you go. It's a really nifty item. I actually have this at home. It's great, it's 39.99. Again, it's offering a lot of a product for a low price point. There you go, just a quick snapshot of Bell Dre. I'm now going to take you over to Progress. So Progress is, again, it's one of our fairly new brands. We've had it on a soft launch for the last two years. It's originated as a bakeware brand. So they manufactured bakeware in Lancashire. So it's a northern brand, a little bit like myself. Um, it's actually coming up to a really exciting, coming up to a 90 year anniversary. So we've got quite a lot of marketing happening with this and promo plans. This range in particular, the European, especially the German market, have really taken on board. They've really embraced this brand. And we've already seen it launched in a Lidl. We've got it in Kaufmann, we've got it in Raver. We've got it in um, some of the French markets. And also really excitingly, we've actually launched it recently in Argos, um, which is a Taste the World range, which I'm gonna show you in a moment. And I also have a launch with Tesco's and Jan Sells, a nice healthy eating campaign. So from the soft launch, quite quickly, we started to gain traction in the mass market supermarkets, which is where we really want to bring this brand back to life. We see it as being a supermarket brand, which is my job over the course of the next year or so to make sure it's a well-established market leading brand. So on the journey, I'll take you, just give you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to do with it. So we're having this as the on-trend brand. So we regularly rotate all our ranges based on trends that are currently popular in the market. It crosses over SDA, which is small domestic appliances, and a cook shop, kitchen accessories, and bakeware. So here you can see here's a nice metallic range. It all coordinates nicely. The idea behind that is we're trying to entice not only our retail buyer, but the end consumer to buy into a range. Don't buy one product, buy the full collection. It's inspiring. Retail buyers are challenged with increasing their average spend. The solution is to have coordinated ranges. If your customer's coming in to buy a fry pan, the likelihood is when they see a full range together like this, they may buy a kettle, they may buy a toaster. There's more chance of them buying some utensils. So this is something that we're really focusing in on here at Ultimate Products. So we'll go over to the next on trend, which is very much relevant for at the moment, is this Scandi look. So again, we have it across multiple categories. It's a really nice matte black and matte grey. And then what we've done is we've put little accents of a wooden soft finish TPR on the, on the utensils and on the pan handles to coordinate nicely, giving that nice inspiring piece. And like I say, we change these regularly. These are new ranges. And the next time I come and present, there'll be something new and exciting here. I'm gonna take us over to the range that we've just launched with Argos, which is Taste the World. So again, now more relevant than ever, we are entertaining at home, we're entertaining our families, we're trying to keep them occupied during the weekends or after school and so forth. So we've pulled together a range that has been really successful within Argos and it's Taste the World. So it's a variety of products from all over the world. So we have an Indian samosa maker, we have a raclette, we have a Japanese tapenyaki. 
we have the British pie maker, as Brits love, love the pies. And then we have some fun crepe making, so you can make those pancakes for breakfast. And then we have the pizza ovens, which are very popular at this moment in time. All this retails from anything from 20 pounds up to 50 pounds. And it's something fun. It's something that you can engage with your family. So this is something really exciting. We've launched it in Argos and we also have it online. And it's something that we're gonna expand out on now into next year. The last brand that I want to show you is Salter. So Salter is 260 years old. It's one of, if not the only brand that's 260 years that's still available on household today. We've, um, we've taken the UK market significantly with this brand and we have it across SDA, kitchen appliances. We have it across cookshop, bakeware and utensils. Again, very similar theory to progress, but we're trying to entice the customer to buy into a range. So what you'll see here is beautiful coordinated pieces. Now Salter, during the, during the pandemic, I will highlight something, during the pandemic, Retail buyers have been challenged. Their main objective has been to reduce down their supply base. The reason for this is they have limited resource and they don't have enough people to manage such a large portfolio of suppliers. To bring a range like this together, it takes five factories, so that's five suppliers. That's five suppliers you have to talk to for packaging, that need to coordinate finishes, that need to coordinate colors to bring it to life. It takes a lot of time takes a lot of resource. We do the job for them. So we are giving them the full solution under one supplier. So we take all the ideas, all their trends, all their concepts, and we bring it to life across multiple categories. And they've got one supplier on their portfolio. This is what we're about. It's making the job easier for our retail partners. So this is a nice range that we're launching. In fact, this is brand new. So this is something that we'll be launching over the course of the next six months. And here you can see it's a nice gray that's graduated into a darker gray. So it's the ombre effect, which is very much on trend. It's a softer touch feel, which is really nice. Nice and effective on there. Gray is the number one selling kitchen color and also the number one selling paint color now. So it's more relevant than ever. We'll go on to the Cosmos. The reason I want to show you the Cosmos is again, if you didn't at the start of the pandemic become really healthy and conscious of your health um, and your lifestyle, you will post-COVID. So we brought together a coordinated range of blenders, juicers, product that can help prepare nice, healthy, tasty food. This is an item that we stock. It does exceptionally well on the likes of Amazon already. And it's something that we're now expanding out on. But again, the idea is if your customer is coming in to buy a blender, Hopefully, they're going to go away and buy a kettle, a toaster, and just have a full, a full suite, a full collection of our salt and cosmos range. I'm going to take you down the other side of the showroom now, but as we go, we'll give you a little bit of a glimpse so you can clearly understand all the hard work that our buying teams and our designers go into, into, into pulling together these beautiful coordinating ranges across multiple categories, which takes a lot of time and effort. It looks so beautiful. The next is, I want to show you one of our success stories. And it's um, a range that's growing. It's growing from strength to strength. And it's very much well and truly established us as a market leader with this brand. Um, this, I'm proud to say, is the second larger, it's the second brand within um, Cookshop. Um, so it's a market leader. So it's number two in the market behind T-File. And we actually penetrated the market and actually established ourselves with this Medestone. So what we have is we have a trademarked product. So it's a really heavy duty non-stick that we have um, designed ourselves. And it allows us to proudly claim that it's five times stronger. And we launched this into Sainsbury's and Argos and Tesco's five years ago. Little did we realize how special this was. All of a sudden we had retailers bringing us up saying, hey, I, my life lights have gone through the roof. This is great. And it was a really simple ethos. The market leader was $29.99 for a 28 cm fry pan. We give the claims that ours is five times stronger and we went out at $14.99 and the volumes went through the roof. And that's the same message that we apply across all our products. The challenge to the buyers was set to come with the next new 
megastone. So we then evolved and we made the nonstick more robust and we went for seven times stronger, which you can see there. This is currently out in the market. We've then just recently launched our platinum, which looks really nice. As you can see there, we've just changed the aesthetics of it slightly. It looks more premium. Again, keeping it heavily on the megastone. You know, we've got customers who are coming back who are repeating time and time again. The reviews on Amazon on these ranges are out this world. You know, customers are really enjoying the experience. So then the newest item that we're bringing to the market next year, so we're giving you a little bit of a sneak peek, is our nine times stronger. So it's nine times stronger. So what you've got here is you can use metal utensils. So when you're in a rush in the morning, you're making your scrambled eggs, you can use that fork and it's not going to damage your lovely pan set. But then what we've also done quite smartly, we've actually put a thermo collar. So the thermo collar actually, if you look here, you've got a little bit of metal here. This actually turns bright red at the optimum temperature to see your meat or your vegetables. So you've got nine times stronger cookware. So you've got really super strong nonstick properties on there. And then you've also got the thermo collar. This is all for the same price as our original five times stronger. So what you're trying to do is that customer who has bought into the five times stronger Metastone, they've thoroughly enjoyed it, but they've had it for five years. You're now trying to encourage them to upgrade to the newest most latest technology at exactly the same price point. It's a really easy message and it works. So it's something that we're continuing to develop. And that is ultimately our strategy throughout all our ranges that we, that we develop. This is new. This is launching in Tesco's next year. The last but not least product that I want to show you, which is incredibly important to all of us here today is our sustainability range. So we've launched a range called Salt to Earth. It's environmentally friendly and it's sustainable, which is something that we are all considering more and more globally. So what we have here is this beautiful Salt to Earth range. What we've done is we've applied what's called a ceramic coating. A ceramic coating has no chemicals. So when it's applied to the cookware in production, it releases no chemicals into the environment, making it environmentally friendly, which is why we can claim this statement. On top of that, we've used recycled and recyclable packaging. So it's the full sustainable. We're considering us and our future. This is the salt to earth. We launched this in Argos and Sainsbury's last year, and it's actually just gone into the range and it's done really well. So it's something that we're now expanding out on. In fact, it's, we're expanding out on it as a company as well. So we're becoming more considerate about our products, our development, making sure that it's more sustainable, making sure the way that we operate in our offices and in our warehouse is more sustainable as a whole. So this just gives you a little bit of a, a glimpse of what's more to come. So we're expanding out on this over the course of the next six to 12 months. In a snapshot, and I can talk and talk and talk, I've got 3000 <laughs> products, this is us. This is what we do on a day to day. This is how we present to our retailers globally. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, You're very Jenny. Welcome. As you can see, the excitement Jenny has about product, this runs throughout the whole business through the buying, through the selling, through the design departments, even through the warehouse. You can see we're very passionate about what we do. So I think that, like you said, that's the snapshot. And we're ready for questions. Let's take a seat. Thank you both. That was a, a fascinating look round. Um, I'm ready to get my trolley out, Jenny. Right, so we've had a, a number of questions in. Um, I would ask that people remember that the focus of today is around the brand and the products. So uh, if you do have any financial questions, of course, uh, the management team would be happy to answer them at a later date. But, but today, you know, let, let's stick to the products. So um, a couple in here. Um, What's your USP that differentiates you from other buying organizations that also supply all major supermarkets? Okay. Um, our USP is offering that val added value, that value products so under brands, the well-known heritage brands. In particular, we're becoming more patriotic in the UK than ever with the light of Brexit. And the people are turning to them with those trusted brands, which has stood the test of time, which I've just alluded to. We have 
100 year brands, we have 150 year brands, we have 260 year brands. On top of that, whatever the market leader is doing, we are trying to do it either the same or better at half the retail price. The consumers are considering where they spend their money. You know, we want to make sure that we're giving that added value. On top of that, you've got innovation. So we've put immense pressures under our buying teams and our designers to create the newest, latest innovation. Our retail buyers are not traveling at the moment. They're not going to China. They're not going to these trade fairs. So it's up to us to encourage them to come and see us remotely and sell to them all our innovation. So our USP is our value added value, would you say? Um, I think what Jenny said is 100% correct. Just, just to add on to that. I think what the retailer sees in alternate products now, and this has been going on for a good 10 years, is our track record. A retailer will go to somebody else just to buy it for 20 cents cheaper. They can't do that anymore because they, they actually don't have the teams. They want a reliable um, supplier who delivers on time top quality products with all the right QA and sustainable factories. It's, that's what's becoming very, very important to the buyers now in the retail market. They need the product on time with the current specification. I think with everything what Jenny's just said, adding on to what we do, that's what's that's why the buyers are coming to us now. They're not really over the last few years, they just they are focusing on us because they know we do the job. Our USP is we do the job. Um, who owns the IP behind your fantastic products? Um, most of us, most of the IP we own, or we will work with factories under partnership and exclusivities. Okay. Can you tell us how big your innovation team is and how quickly can you react to new trends and get the product to market? Um, our innovation team is, I will say, is roughly around 40 to 50 people. Um, reaction to market is instant because we can, we can look at products and our team in Guangzhou, which is about 20 sources out there, are immediately on it. We, all, we also have our factory partners. We don't have hundreds and hundreds of factories. We have our partners that we produce with. So our reaction is very, very fast. And when it's not, we kick ourselves. But so we are, we're, we're quite fast. It's worth noting as well, we have lots of products waiting in the wings. We try and get a little bit of longevity out of our product where we can. So we have quite a lot of development already sat there ready and waiting that my sales guys are biting up a bit to present to retailers. So we're well prepared for the next, next bout of, of innovation. Perhaps then, Simon, touching on what you just commented there on manufacturers. Um, question is, what's your relationship like with them? Where are they based? And do you have any exclusivity arrangements? 80% um, of our factories are in Asia. We have a lot of exclusive arrangements under contract, but well, it doesn't really, the contract I'm not bothered about. We've got fabulous partnerships that have been built up in China over 20 years, and we create a lot of newness and exclusivity with these partners. So um, we're happy with our partnerships out there. We are looking and expanding outside of China to get more production outside of China. But we are finding that difficult the last nine months because you do need to travel, you need to physically see the factories. Do you also white label products for large retailers? No, we used to do that 10 years ago. That's how we were big builders on, on OEM white label. But it was, it was a very difficult business. One, one year you've got the order and then the next year they change it for one cent. That was a big focus of Andy Gossage's and I's 10 years ago was we focus on our brands. We don't do any own label. So we, we actually stopped doing own label dramatically and our turnover dropped. But in that same year, our turnover shot up. It was, it was really interesting because they, the retailer and the consumer believe in the brand. So they, they don't want to take the risk the next year of not buying it under the brand if it doesn't sell. So that was a big, that was a big focus of ours 10 years ago. We, we don't do own label, white label. Okay, thank you. Now, um, do you expect that your customer buying teams will be fundamentally changed by the impact of the pandemic? And their experience of your response and can you give an example? Absolutely they're reducing their resource down significantly and the more reliant on the likes of us to do the job for them and um, there's a massive overhead to to apply to um, retail so for example major retailers once upon a time you'd have you'd have 10 to 15 buyers within a buying team you're lucky if you've got two three now so they really are simplifying the way that they operate 
They're building relationships with, as you, you, I mentioned, I, we call them retail partners because we work so closely with them um, and we are supplier partners to them. So we really get under the skin of knowing the customer and how they operate and what their strategies are for the next upcoming seasons. And we, as Simon mentioned, we do the job for them. So they're becoming more and more reliant on their supply partners. And give you an example, the majority of major retailers, the major retailers out there, there is, it's in the press constantly, they reduce down their resource at head office constantly, they're trying to streamline and cut overheads. So that's where we come into play. There's, there's massive changes in the retail buying structure, especially over the last nine months. It's, there's a huge shift to put it onto the brands to do the supply chain for them. There's, there's going to be a lot less traveling from, from the retailer. Well, then this ne leads neatly on, perhaps, as you become a, a more important cog um, in their supply chain. Can you give us a little bit more detail on how you, you manage your different channels um, and the brands across the different retailers, um, and particularly then between your retailers, retailers and also online with Amazon? Absolutely. So we have key retail partners, as I mentioned earlier, actually, that we try and get a little bit of longevity out of the products and we try and make it last as long as we can. We do that by having retail partners that we launch products with. So quite often we will launch products with a major supermarket, for example. They will run it for, it could be a four week promo, it could be a 12 week promo, it could be for six months. They would potentially have it exclusive or to a certain exclusivity, so they may be them and a few other retail outlets that have it. And then once they're finished with it, they would then take it to mass market. So they help us establish ourselves. As I showed you around the showroom, each product range that you see has its own identity. And the reason we do that is so then each retail outlet ha can have their own range quite easily. We have enough products here to service the majority of the retailers out there and we can give them exclusive ranges at different times. So again, when you're working so closely with your retail partners, you're working to their buying calendars. So you know what crucial times that they need certain product launches or they need exclusivity or they need to ensure that it's not in their competitors' stores, for example. So we work strategically to ensure that we manage products can be by identity, it can be by product launch, it can be just by transparency, and, and then we just launch it into those markets and then we just manage it effectively through timings. Um, on the Amazon pricing, which is the last part of the question, um, this is quite easy to do for us. We don't sell at the same price as a retailer. So when we are ready to sell on Amazon, if a pan set is selling for £20 in a retailer, we're £25 on Amazon because obviously the cost to serve on that product is more. Um, and as you know, the our online growth is, is huge. So Amazon, we do have to be careful. I'm sorry, Amazon's a fantastic platform for marketing your product. A lot of consumers now will go straight on to Amazon and search a product there versus Google, for example. So within Amazon, it's a great tool to be able to market and put a lot of content and educate your own consumer into that product so our retail partners are happy because we manage it so well here in-house they're happy for us to list our ranges as a marketing tool as such within amazon okay then i have you, you do segue nicely onto my next question i've got a couple here on quality uh, one does talk about reviews um, of megastone um, and it's, it's some performance issues that have been on Amazon. So perhaps you could comment on that. Um, but then perhaps more broadly, looking at quality assurance, um, you know, how do you uh, ensure that uh, if the product has failed, you can recall it successfully? What have you learned from that process in the past? Uh, and how do you operate um, quality assurance uh, more broadly from here in the UK with uh, China? So I think if, you, if you've seen a, a bad review on Amazon, you will always see a few bad re reviews on Amazon. We, ha we have a reporting system on a Monday morning that even I get involved in because our buying teams have to really study the, the reviews on Amazon. And you do get some, some very, very weird ones. On Megastone, most of the reviews are absolutely fantastic. So if there is a couple, um, I'm sure they have been looked after by our customer service. Um, on the QA side and Q QC side, we have 29 people in total in this division. 
it's very, very important to us because when, you, when you've got a comment you sell for, you want to sell John Lewis products for the Asda price, you still have to give the John Lewis quality. So we spend a lot of time and a lot of money on testing. We don't just test it ourselves. We, we go to outsource it to TUV, which is a very large testing house for Europe. We use SGS. We spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds testing the product. Then we send it out to 30, 40 people. So if it's a toaster, we'll give it to 30, 40 people to test. If it's a Hoover, the same. And then it has to go through stringent, stringent testing certification, which is for lead and for Ross and for the plastics. So each product, um, hundreds of hours are spent on it, even if from a kettle, a vacuum cleaner, even to a cutlery set. And then during production, we do the same sort of testing. And then once production is finished, we're still doing the same sort of, of testing. And then we do a final test and then we put it on a ship. And that's how it works. And then when it comes back to the UK, once it's in the UK, we we'll still, we'll still might do some testing. It's been one of our USPs is our quality of product against anybody else. Thank you, Simon. Um, given that one of your USPs, Max Bees, is producing Me Too product versus the market leader, how do you successfully avoid being sued? Um, well, when Andy Gossage joined the business 14, 15 years ago, I think I had maybe 16, 17 people looking at, try not go for it, questioning what we did. Um, since Andy Gossage got here, the last 10 years, 11 years, we, we very rarely have an issue, very. We spend, again, time and money with painted lawyers. We've got very good, strong painted lawyers in Manchester. Our management team and buying team, the, uh, the youngest one that's on it has been with me 13 years. We have a lot of scars. We have made those mistakes. We don't make them anymore. We know how to get around things and we also spend the money with the painted lawyers. Um, we're way beyond all that. Grown up through that period. Um, I've got a lot of scars on my back, I promise you. <laughs> Looking back to Amazon, somebody says they understand they are raising their prices for the marketplace. Mm. Will you pass this on to the customer or will it be absorbed by the business? And what do you expect other competitors to do? No, we aren't raising any prices on, on Amazon because the, they do make it difficult for you to raise the prices on Amazon as well at the moment. Since COVID, you can't really you can't raise prices. So we have we have swallowed some of it, but it's um, it's not it's not been that high at all. Okay, thank you. Um, do you provide easy credit to customers buying your brand online? And is this something you can provide on your online shops or on Amazon? It's a very very good question, um, and it has been brought up. We don't do it, um, and maybe one day we'll look into it. Okay. Um, across different geographies where you operate, who do you consider your competitor sourcing great products, um, but also focused on building brands? Um, we have one major competitor. Our major competitor is our retail customers buying office. That's who our competitor is. Our competitor is Tesco's buying office, it's Asda's buying office, it's B&M's buying office. And that's who, that's who we focus on as our competitor because we've got to do a better job for them for a better price for them, take all the work out for them and deliver it on time. And all, I say to all my guys, that is our competition. You have obviously um, in past management statements um, highlighted the work that you've been doing within your community. Um, and uh, the, the efforts you have made to, to be sustainable. Um, question here, what's stopping all of your products going down the salt to earth environmentally friendly line? And, and what are you doing with other products um, to maintain sustainability? Um, that's the route that we are going down. So we're actually, we have an environmental committee who um, they join together every month um, and they come up with creative ways of making us more sustainable. And then we also have our product developers who also work on sustainability, including just simple things like reduction of packaging and so forth. 
We actually team up with our retail partners as well. So not only um, are we getting our own insights, but we're getting the information directly from the retailers of what their customers are expecting out of their product and their sustainability factors. So it's something that's forever growing. And um, as you mentioned, we started off with this. It's in our, we're in our first year of this product, but the intention is to now spread this out and develop it across all categories. And um, any big surprises from stepping up European sales, uh, things that differ from the UK? Um, quality is, um, is, is stricter. There's got extra testing, extra testing there. Um, but maybe our, the, our success in Europe, I feel, has been we have been very different to everybody else. Our products, our innovation, our packaging, it stands out. And all retail buyers are always looking for something different. What's next? What's new? So the retailers that we've part, partnered up with in Europe has mainly been the supermarkets. We, you know, our normal is discount up. And then now we've, we've evolved in the UK for supermarkets. So we've just focused on supermarkets in Europe. And they, uh, they really like what we do on the packaging, on the quality, on the price points and the innovation. So... Uh, no, no big surprises. It's you've just got to service that customer on time with a great quality product. Um, come on here. Have you given consideration to new products for when we come out of lockdown? I'm not sure how different our lives are going to be, but uh, is there anything you think we're going to need when we are out of lockdown? Absolutely, the trends are there. So you know, we've, we've educated ourselves on having a clean and more organized home, for example. So that's an area that we're growing. And um, a healthier lifestyle. So we're developing our healthy collections and encouraging a healthier lifestyle. There's various trends. And um, as Simon mentioned earlier, we're constantly evolving. We're constantly innovating and adapting our product to new trends and demands that are out there. So yes, we are listening, we are learning, but generally the biggest trends and feedback that we're getting from not only the end consumer, but the retail partners is next year, it's gonna be about affordability. So, you know, penny pinching, people are going to be more conscious where they spend. So making sure that added values there, the healthy lifestyle, which we're already seeing an uptake on from our retail partners and making a cleaner, safer home. Preparing ourselves for the new normal. Yes. Absolutely. A, a rather specific question here, um, but how much of your stock is imported via Felix Stowe container port and has this been causing you any problems? Great question. <laughs> loads of problems, um, loads of aggravation. Um, but again, when these things happen, this, this can be a positive role to the product. Um, we're, we're first to understand and know about it. So we knew about the problem with Felix Stowe eight weeks ago where we were warning our retail partners, this is what's happening, this is what's happening. And they were, a lot of them were coming back saying, don't know what you're talking about, don't know what you're talking about. Because obviously the, the FOB sales that we have as well and, and our online sales do come from Felix there. So over those eight week periods, we moved a lot to different ports. Um, we did get stuck with a few, but because of the partnerships we've had with our, our 20 year partnerships with our hauliers, we've got on 95% of our ships. A lot of our retailers have got big, big problems and a lot of importers have big, big problems. And again, now what we've done about that is we've been ringing them every day. We've got stock. We've got stock. What do you need? Who hasn't delivered? How can we help you? So again, Ultimate sees these things happening because of our, because of our experience and because of our China office. And um, we turn these into benefits and positivity. We've got one here about um, acquiring further distressed heritage brands in the UK. And would you consider doing the same in Germany? 100%. Um, we, we did expect there to be more brands out there. I think on our side of the industry, not on the clothing side, on our side, the homeware side, people who were a bit in trouble um, have been able to sell their stocks because everyone was looking for stocks. So it, we've not had the opportunities we thought, so maybe next year, and definitely Germany would love to buy some distressed brands. Great. Well, that is it. I have some thank yous that have come through to both of you. I think it's gone down really well. We've loved having a look around the showroom and um, perhaps we can do it again at some point in the future. Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. Maybe for next Christmas, definitely.
Right, we're all off to the shops now. Thank you to you both. All right, thank Bye. you. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.